you get somebody on a on a routine. Okay, they're they're making their foods, etc. You in the beginning of part of the podcast, you mentioned people having cravings. Everybody has like cravings here and there, whether it's for super sugary foods, etc. Um, how do you help people attack different types of cravings? I know, like you know, high fiber foods will help with satiety, etc. But like for myself in the past, you know, I had my macros set. Um, and I would be someone who would continuously always crave really, really high carb sugary foods all the time, no matter in what shape I was in, whether I was shredded or not. Um, for me personally, I had like, what are you talking about, man? You're always shredded. Get out of here. <laughs> but, but like for, for me, I ended up having to just like lower carbohydrates. So I eat less carbs than I used to in the past and I don't have that as bad, but, um, how would you like help people experiment to figure out how they can get rid of those cravings? Yeah, people can be split. That's a very good question. People can be split into general, two general groups. So there's a lot of overlap. Um, one group of people, if they have a little bit of some shit they want, they're totally good to go. I don't relate to these people at all, but they like have like one or two cookies and they're like, I'm good. Like, which to me makes no guy. My sense. wife can do that. I don't get it. Nope. It's crazy. She has a <laughs> gift, like legit. Like yeah. you should just be in awe of her. Um, and then another group of people, like if they see cookies, <laughs> they will stab somebody to get them, like pulling ice cream cones out of hit kids' hands in the street, shit like that. Um, so if you're in the group of folks that just can do a little bit, that's the best way to manage cravings. So if someone's like, hey, I really want some cookies on this diet, you'd be like, okay, have a couple cookies, no big deal. If you know that that's how they're like or part of you experimenting. If you know that they're the other way, and a lot of times people will tell you, like you just told me, you were like, look, I can't be around sugary foods because I'll just eat the shit. And like, it's so funny. People will be like, uh, you know, how, like, how many bowls of cereal did you eat? And I'm like, the, the box. <laughs> what do you mean the box? I'm like, well, you get a box of cereal, eat the box. I always understand that that's a single serving. Yeah. But so for folks like that, what you have to do is separate the diet into two phases. One is an intentional phase where you push ahead to lose weight. And at that point, you don't have cereal. You don't have any of that good shit that's going to make you go crazy. You just, first of all, don't buy it. Second of all, don't come around it. And third of all, use your fucking willpower to say to myself, for the next two months, I eat what the fuck the diet says and nothing else. Mm. Because I'm a fucking grown up and I do what the fuck I'm supposed to do, not what I want. I'm not tricks, rabbit. I'm not fucking fiending on cereal. I am, but I can control it, right? I swear to God. So for those two months that you and your coach said, I'm going to be on the diet, you don't touch the shit. And then when you're not, so when you've accomplished your goal, let's say you lost 10 pounds, mm -hmm. now it's time to take a diet break, maybe another two months, where you essentially keep the weight off. And keeping weight off is way easier than taking it off to begin with. Then when you keep the weight off, you start to eat more normal food for the first week or two. You still don't hit the cereal because it's still too fucking good. You're still too hungry. After like two weeks of normal food, you're like, man, I've had just about as much rice and whatever kind of shit that I'm ever going to have. You're not super hungry and crazy. You're just crazy. And then two weeks after the end of that push, you go in and you have some cereal and you have a fucking box. Fuck it, right? But then your body, your hormones are back pretty level. Your metabolism's up pretty high. And all of a sudden, you have a box of cereal and the next day, you don't even gain any weight. You haven't held any water. A couple of days later, you have another half box of cereal. A couple of days after that, you have a bowl and you're like, man, well, I guess I got my cereal fixed. Yeah. So I think a lot of times people think of dieting as like, okay, I'm going to start eating well. Like, uh -huh. I'm going to eat low calories. I'm going to cut my shit. Like, uh, and I'm just going to keep doing that forever. Like that's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. You do it for a few months at a time. You meet your short term goals. Then you give your body and mind a break for months, not days, not weeks, months. So you can just essentially feel out your body's new weight. And then your cravings start to go away and you eat much more normal food. And then at the end of that process, if you have more weight to lose, you do another push and you repeat the process, so on and so forth. I hate it when people have the mentality of like, I once I start a diet, it's forever. Like that's total bullshit. You can weave in and out intelligently and on the net balance, lose fat, gain muscle, so on and so forth. So at different points in your life, you might just be in a little bit different shape. You might get, you know, a little bit out of shape because you might uh, take a diet break. Um, and at other times you might, uh, might go in hard and get in better shape, right? Well, Mark, clearly you don't know how Instagram works because on Instagram, you always have to be in the best shape. You just need those photos. Sharp. God damn it. You're right. You just one photo shoot, actually <laughs> that shit for a year. And then everyone's like, oh my God, you're always in shape. And you're like, Ugh. I just had to bring five <laughs> different outfits to that shoot. That, you know what? When I first found out that's how the shit worked, I was like, man, that makes a lot of sense. Just gotta get but one you're photo. completely, completely correct. Like, and that's the thing too with Instagram 
and social media is a lot of folks don't know that that's how the fitness pros do it. So they think like, well, Phil Heath is in shape year round. Like, no, he's not like, and he'll be the first to tell you he's not. Um, and people don't understand that sometimes life is way more important than left fucking looking chiseled. Sometimes you go on, you know, like Christmas holiday and you eat fuck all for a whole week and don't give a fuck. And it's fucking great. It's beautiful. Like, and then you can always diet later. Whereas that? I saw a fridge magnet once at a friend's house that, um, I dieted for a month and lost 30 days. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes that shit is real. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you feel like you're uh, missing out. So how do people kind of incorporate, you know, some cheat meals and stuff? What's your advice? I know you, you were just talking about the two different types of people and how you might have to be very careful when saying, Hey, uh, just uh, go for it. How do you incorporate some cheat meals for people? And how do you incorporate even like a diet break? Yeah. So for the folks that can be moderate, they're called moderators, moderators and abstainers. For the folks that can eat a little bit and not freak out, and as a matter of fact, the eating a little bit helps them uh, because it prevents the cravings from getting out of hand. Those folks can absolutely do like one to two cheat meals per week, even on one of those pushing hypocaloric hard fat loss phases. You just program that into their diet and you say, okay, like Friday and Saturday night, you have a cheat meal. And you can agree with them, or if you're doing your own diet, you can agree with yourself and say, look, I'm only going to have like two menu items or one menu item. Because, you know, cheat meal means some different shit to some different people. I've had some cheat meals that start and they just don't really end until I pass out. Um, so if, but, but if folks are moderators, then that's not a big deal. You'd be like, go have cheeseburger and French fries. Like, here's how you know your client's not a moderator anymore and they're an abstainer. They're like, so, like, when you say cheeseburger, like, how many patty? You're like, dude, that's it. You fail the test. <laughs> yeah, you're fat. So, you're you're done. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, for folks like that, that like, you give them a cheat meal and they end up drowning themselves in fucking coconut oil or whatever, just drink right <laughs> from the can. It's a weird way to do a cheat meal. But uh, for folks like that that can't do the cheat meal, I'm actually a big fan of just abstaining from cheat meals altogether. So, when I do my own phases of uh, dieting to try to get into better shape, I straight up just don't cheat. But it's not forever. And that's one thing is like bringing some fucking adulthood to the conversation. Like, I'll tell you guys this, and I'm sure you've had this experience. But if a motherfucker's first question to you when you're programming a diet for them is, when do I get my cheat meal? It's a bad fucking start. Mm -hmm. Bad start. Like, it's like joining the army and, and like someone's like, when do I get a gun to kill people? You're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe never. In your case, <laughs> never. So, you know, it's about understanding that a diet is a time. It's a temporary time, several months. Once you've accomplished your goal, we can weave cheat meals back in slowly. And I'm a fan of as soon as the diet ends, and this is kind of a mind fuck, you don't start a cheat meal as soon as the diet ends. You raise clean calories, so to speak, normal, healthy foods, and eat more of them for a week or two until you're not psychotic anymore. And then when you have your first cheat meal, you get a couple of benefits. One, it doesn't taste like pure sex anymore. Maybe just like shitty sex. I don't know where that analogy went. But you know, like after if you were done, it tastes like shitty. So what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> so you know, like a lot of times people will will cheat right after their diet. And the, the shit is like a religious experience. Mm -hmm. You're like, I swear to God, the Cheesecake Factory was designed as Nirvana. It's heaven on earth. This place, <laughs> fuck temples and all that shit. Yeah. Cheesecake Factory. Like, that's not good because then you have that amazing cheat meal and you come home and you start eating clean food again. And you're like, this sucks. And what do you want to do? You just want to cheat more, cheat more, cheat more. And then there goes the weekend and you've gained like three pounds of tissue back and pure fat just because you couldn't control yourself. So what I like to do is for people, bring them down in their diet when they're at the bottom, reintroduce healthy food you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of days even of eating like 150 grams of carbs from rice and broccoli and chicken, you're just not starving anymore. And then the cheat meal is a fun treat that's fun, but you're not like, that's it. That all I'm going to do forever is cheat. So when I reintroduce cheat meals for those folks, it's usually at a delayed factor, unless like, I don't know, you want a bodybuilding show and then go cheat. 